What if the hardest part of a shiny hunt wasn't actually finding shiny Pokemon, but capturing them? Today, I'll be answering that question by shiny hunting every single starter Pokemon in the Indigo Disc DLC using only Beast Balls, which have just a 10% base catch rate. Oh, and for maximum pain, I'm only giving myself 3 attempts per shiny before I'm forced to send them to the afterlife. <sighs> yup, this might just be my hardest shiny hunting challenge yet. For starters, I look for everyone's favorite onion turtle, Bulbasaur. After using a grass encounter sandwich and going to these rocks in the coastal biome, I was able to find them pretty easily. Little did I know that I was stumbling into a Bulba cult. Wait, why are none of these guys moving? Are you guys okay? You guys are cute, but this is kind of creepy, not gonna lie. Bulba, Bulba, Bulba. After being hit with some weird type of hypnosis, I managed to break out and ran around for the next 20 minutes before I spotted one that looked a little different than the others. Yo, let's go, there's a shiny. Come here, little turtle boy. I was scared I might miss it, but it has a noticeable color change. Alright, now comes the hard part. A false swipe and a hypnosis of my own later, I was ready to throw out a beast ball. Even with 3 attempts, it was going to be pretty difficult and I knew there was a good chance I would have to search for another, oh I caught it on the first try. I guess I'm just a lucker dog, as Turney and the Bulbasaur became the first shiny starter to join me. But don't worry, there are going to be some painful hunts later in the video. Yup, lots and lots of pain. For my next hunt, I decided I might as well go in Pokedex order and look for a Charmander next. Unlike the amazing shiny that Charizard has, Charmander just turns slightly more yellow. I made a fire encounter sandwich in the savanna biome and ran around this muddy lake where tons of Charmander spawned. Unfortunately, I didn't find much on the first sandwich. Oh, unless you count this weird green bird over here. I did catch the duo, but by the end of the sandwich, I completely forgot about it and reset over it. Feel free to call me an idiot in the comments, I probably deserve it. Anyway, the next sandwich proved to be much better. I still can't believe I reset over the shiny to duo. Maybe it's cause I have like 10 of them from Let's Go Pikachu, but hopefully the shiny gods don't punish me for that. Oh wait, there is a shiny Charmander. We weren't punished, let's go! Alright, beast ball number one. Let's get another one and done. Nope, okay, we still have two more tries though. Ugh, come on Charmander, don't you want a loving home? Okay, this is my last try. Honestly, if this doesn't catch, I deserve it for the duo. Please catch though. Let's go, that's how we do it. We were again super lucky and caught Bash the Charmander on the very last attempt. Time to move on to... Squirtle? Just kidding. I was looking for Squirtle outbreaks in the canyon biome because it's impossible to isolate hunt with all the other water types around. But I found a Tepic outbreak first instead. What's crazier is that there was also a Pipla, Froakie, and Rowlet outbreak on the map too. I decided to check out the Tepig one first and it turned out to be in a pretty decent location. I became one with my Latias in synchro mode, knocked out 60 fire pigs and started doing a combination of picnic resets and running around. This might be a good time to mention that there are 3 things I can do to increase the 10% base catch rate of beast balls during this challenge. The first is using false swipe and putting them to sleep. The second is encountering the shinies using a backstrike, which increases the catch rate to around 16%. But the last way is using something that probably only 6 other people in the world have ever made intentionally, a catching power 3 sandwich. 
This, along with everything else, boosts the catch rate to a whopping 27%, which is still low, but good enough to not drive me crazy. After arming myself with a fire sparkling title and catching power sandwich, it wasn't long before I came across another shiny. I've never seen what shiny Tepic looks like actually. I know Embor has like blue flames, but I feel like Tepic wouldn't have any blue. I guess we'll find- oh, hello there little one. I can't say I expected a golden pig, but it's quite fitting on you buddy. Alright, let's do this. Okay, my catching power is still active, so I should have a better chance of catching... Ah, nope. I guess not. I decided to reset to preserve my ball since it was still pretty early on in the challenge. To be honest, I didn't have much hope for the second attempt without the catching power boost, but... Against the odds, Chonk the Ted Pig kept our 100% success rate alive. Let's see how long we can keep this up. Next, I took a trip to the Piplup outbreak in the polar biome. I started knocking out the penguins with synchro mode to get the increased shiny odds, and also as a little revenge for the trauma that BDSP's briefcase simulator caused me. Unfortunately, my revenge was cut short because before 60 Piplups were even wiped out. Oh, what? There is a shiny already, let's go! I'm pretty sure I was only at 20 piplups or something, and I didn't even have a sandwich boost going yet either. I guess I'm pretty lucky after all, but the hard part is still coming up. The first attempt failed as usual, but the second attempt... Power up the piplup was thankfully a quick and easy hunt that once again kept our success rate going. But what I didn't know was that for the first time, the next hunt was about to cause me a little bit of trouble. Speaking of trouble, Editor Hoji here to give some troubling news that only 3% of you guys are actually subscribed. Make sure to shiny hunt that subscribe and like button to help me buy more sandwiches. For the third outbreak on the map, I went to the Froki outbreak in the coastal biome. I've always wanted a shiny Froki because even though Froki's shiny is mediocre at best, Greninja's is chef's kiss. Anyway, I once again went on a mass fainting spree of these frogs with my buddy Latias in synchro mode. I had only reduced the Froki population by about 30 or so when I found out about the consequences of synchro mode. What are they exactly? Well, just, just roll the clip. Sorry Frokies, this has to be done. I'm technically Latias right now, so it's basically like a Pokemon battle right now anyway. Yo, wait, is that a shiny? It is! Let's go, another one under 60. Oh boy, okay, this is gonna be tricky because I'm pretty sure if I exit synchro mode right now, this Froki is going to despawn. I'm either going to have to wait until it leaps closer to my body or make it happen on my own somehow. And yeah, I was way too impatient to wait. So I found that I could knock out surrounding Froakies to make the shiny run the opposite way. After doing this for a painstaking 15 minutes, I decided that I was probably close enough and... Whew, okay, the shiny is still here. That was a little risky, but we did it. And ooh, wait, with the new feature I can see that this Froki has a mark. If I catch this, it'll be the first mark shiny for this challenge. Alright, let's do this. The first and second encounters, well, they didn't go the way I wanted them to. I only had one more chance to keep my success rate alive. Okay, come on Froki, I know you want to join the team. Please catch. Aya, why Froki, why? Unfortunately, the streak was dead, and I had to sadly use a brick break straight to Froki's face. Goodbye, dear friend. And so, the search continued. After finishing the population reduction, I found a much smarter way to shiny hunt here. Since I was so close to the coastal plaza, I could just enter and exit to respawn the Froki's, and after only 4 minutes, 
All right, yeah, this is definitely the most efficient way. I'm getting a lot of deerlings in the nearby area, but still a decent number of rookies. Hopefully it doesn't take forever. Uh, hold up. There's one right there, I think. It is. Let's go. That was super fast. All right, we have catching power, so hopefully it does its magic. Come on, come on. Yes, we did it. On the first try, Crokey the Froki was mine. Although this one had no mark, we could at least mark another one off the list. Now it was time to visit the last starter outbreak on the map and hunt for the minty fresh owl Pokemon, Rowlet. This is one of my favorite shinies of all time from my favorite generation, if that wasn't clear from the thumbnail. You guys know the drill by now, transform into Latias, delete 60 Rowlets off the face of the earth, and make a sparkling and catching power sandwich. Unfortunately, my shiny luck with outbreaks came to an end, and I was left with nothing after my first sandwich. Mostly because there were so many other spawns besides Rowlet in the area. But I couldn't give up. I made an encounter sandwich instead, which seemed to do the trick. Whoa, no way. Our minty boy is here already. Hey there, buddy. Your shiny color is somehow even better in this game. Okay, let's see if you decide to join us. I guess Rowlet had other plans at first because he decided to knock itself out with Brave Bird. And with that, he was gone forever. Just kidding. Thankfully, that doesn't count as a catch attempt. A reset later, I could actually start throwing some beast balls. Without catching power this time, the first attempt was a flop. The second attempt was put to a stop. And on the final attempt... Okay, I'm out of relevant rhymes. Let's just say Rowlet was up to some shenanigans after I reset again. Wait, what? Where's the shiny? Uh oh. Uh, don't tell me I lost it. Alright, reset number four. I don't even know what happened. Usually it pops up again, but maybe something went wrong. Oh, thank goodness. There you are, you little bamboozler. You got me worried for a second there. I guess Rowlet felt sorry for pranking me because it decided to stay in the final beast ball. After giving him the very fitting name Bamboozle, we were officially 25% done with the challenge. Next up was the otter Pokemon Oshawott. To be honest, Oshawott doesn't have the greatest shiny, but when an outbreak of them popped up on the map, I knew I had to check it out. If you've been playing through the base game, you probably know that shiny hunting in the water is an interesting experience. So I was very grateful when the shiny gods blessed me with another quick hunt. No way, another fast one. I literally just made my catching power sandwich too. Okay, that's great because I did not want to have to be in this lag fest more than I needed to. Would we catch it on the first attempt? Of course not. But I did decide to try one more attempt without resetting to take advantage of the catching power, which turned out to be a good choice. We were down an extra beast ball, but at least Ashi the Oshawa was mine. Continuing the string of outbreak hunts was Litten. I'm not exaggerating when I say I would die for this little cat. Maybe not when it becomes a scary Incineroar, but for the pre-evolution, oh yeah, we're definitely risking it all. Fortunately, the outbreak was in a pretty convenient spot, and I could just stand on the ledge of this mountain and use Synchro Mode to respawn the Littons. And not too long after, zooming through the mountains with my Latias. Oh, a shiny white cat, let's go. Yo, wait, this one's female too. I think that's only a 12.5% chance? That's amazing. Okay, my luck was officially off the charts because I was able to catch the Litten on the first try. I named her Somi after my real life white cat and did some synchro mode shenanigans with her. She even does this cat licking animation which is so freaking cute. I have no idea when I went from a dog person to a cat person, but Litten is a top tier Pokemon and I will die on this hill, literally. I went for an isolation shiny hunt next in the nature preserve area of the canyon biome. If you use a grass encounter sandwich, you can spawn in a bunch of Tricos here. 
then it's just a matter of playing Ring Around the Rosie until... I wonder if Trico keeps the Sceptile's shiny color. I feel like I remember they do, but... Oh wait, you're shiny, aren't you? Okay, not quite as blue as shiny Sceptile, I think, but still an A-tier shiny. The next few turns were a little painful. Not because my beast balls didn't work, but because I had to use Hypnosis since Spore doesn't work on grass types. Hypnosis has a 60% accuracy rate, which is decent, but I missed it 4 times before it finally connected. Jeez, finally? Okay, now that we got the bad luck out of the way, surely we're gonna catch it first try, right? And we actually did. I gave Trico the nickname Gramps since every time I see Trico, I get reminded of that one anime episode where they had that Grandpa Trico. For some reason, that's a core memory for me. <laughs> for the remainder of the grass sandwich, I went to the spot in the canyon biome where you can basically print out turtwigs and do easy picnic resets. I was kinda scared of missing the shinies since the lighting in this game made some of them look like shinies even when they weren't. And maybe I did miss some because it took another 3 sandwiches before I noticed an odd one out. Oh wait, that's the shiny right? Okay, I thought it would be hard to tell but this is very noticeable actually. Hi little turtle, let's do this nice and easy alright? After failing my first attempt, I made an odd decision to not reset even though I wasn't using a catching power sandwich this time. And you know, the 16% catch rate had nothing on me because I caught it in the second beast ball. Meet the Turtwig has joined our ranks. While running around in my Turtwig cosplay, I couldn't help thinking that this challenge was a lot easier than I thought it would be. I was pretty confident that this luck would continue and we would be done in no time. Yup, as usual, I spoke way too soon. You'll, you'll see why soon enough. Anyway, I went to the charged stone cavern to one of the entrances where I could do picnic resets and like before, print out some chest spins. I made another grass encounter sandwich that blinded me with 300% brightness, probably from its pure deliciousness. I think the shiny gods agree because that same sandwich... Yo wait, there we go. I'm not a big fan of brownish shinies, but this one's not too bad. Alright, here we go. My first beast ball went about as well as it could, if it was opposite day. The second attempt went the same way. But I knew, with the power of friendship I forged with all the starters I found so far, I could do- No, Chespin, my boy. It was nice knowing you, but this hurts me more than it hurts you, trust me. After gobbling up another sandwich and doing some good old relaxing picnic resets, I found another shiny chest bin, a female one this time. It would have been so nice to catch this one, but fate had other plans. Alright, come on chest bin, this is the last attempt. Aya, that's two fails in a row. Ah, <sighs> Tinkerton, you know what you have to do. Okay, now we're talking, another one. Alright, this one's it, I can feel it. Ahem, <clears throat> yeah, turns out this one was not it either. So yeah, the chestbin curse was real and in full effect. From this hunt alone, I quadrupled my number of shiny fails. But I trudged forward, determined to break free of this curse once and for all. Let's go, contestant number 4 has arrived. Nice, this one is marked too. We gotta make this one count. The first attempt went as usual. Chestman burst out of the second beast ball too. I know I just talked big, but honestly, I didn't know if I could handle another fail. Please Chespin, don't make me do what I did to your brothers and sisters. You're the chosen one. Come on. And as if Chespin heard my pleas, he decided to stay in the final beast ball. Bonk the Chespin was mine, and I was finally free of the curse. Now I could finally leave this cavern and head towards the light. After quite a few time resets, I finally stumbled onto a Squirtle outbreak in the cannon biome. 
Even with the outbreak, the Squirtle count in the area was not that good, so there was a pretty good chance I was going to find another shiny first. Little did I know, that was going to be the least of my worries during this particular hunt. Wait, huh? That's a shiny Alolan Geodude. Hey buddy, I have a water sparkling sandwich going on so I have no idea why you showed up, but let's catch you real quick. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I'm such an idiot. I forgot you had explosion. I don't think I saved either. Uh, yep, world's worst shiny hunter right here. Yo, that's shiny Alolan Graveler. If you come for revenge for Geodude, I just want to say that he knocked himself out, okay? Uh oh, I'm pretty far away from my body, so this is going to despawn if I exit synchro mode. Hmm. Yeah, so I learned that you can't really affect where Graveler goes and refuse to walk towards me for the next 15 minutes, so unfortunately, I had to move on. Do my eyes deceive me? A non rock type shiny? Yes, let's go, we found the Squirtle. Okay, this should definitely be close enough to my body. Lo and behold, it turns out it wasn't close enough and when I returned to my body, the Squirtle was gone. Was I possibly the dumbest shiny hunter alive? Well, yes, definitely. But I wasn't going to give up. Ooh, a shiny lantern. Alright, let's use a dive ball. Ah, okay, so I am a shiny hunter after all. I almost forgot for a second there. Hmm, not much time left on the sandwich. Maybe I'll... Ooh, ooh, there it is. Alright, Squirtle. It was a long journey, but we're here. Let's catch you. First attempt, come on, let's make this nice and easy. Yes, we did it. Huey the Squirtle was successfully captured, marking the end of a crazy series of events and the last of the Gen 1 Shinies. Things were finally looking up. I decided to jump all the way to the Gen 8 starters to find myself a Grookey. By going to this beach in the coastal biome, I used a grass encounter sandwich to spawn a bunch of them in, mixed in with the occasional sunflora. Nice, there you are. Actually a pretty noticeable shiny, I was kinda scared I wouldn't be able to spot it. It's only been around 10 minutes too. Alright you little monkey, stay in this beast ball please. Ah, nope. Alright, two more chances. The second attempt failed as well and once again we found ourselves with one last ball and a dream. Let's go! Thank you kind sir, thank you. Groovy the Grookey made a very cute addition to the challenge. Oh and it also had a mark. It was the uncommon mark which I'm pretty sure is the least rare one but who cares. At least we were blessed with a quick hunt. We're going to speed through the next few shinies because nothing crazy really happened. Sit back and relax while you can because the ones after these, well, let's just say things got rough. I went to a Poplio outbreak and found a shiny while zooming around with Latias for a little bit. It was pretty hard to spot it since the only thing that changes is pretty much the ribbon thing around their necks but I was able to catch Poppy the Poplio on the first try. After seeing a Chikorita on the same beach where I found Poppy, I was inspired to go for it next. I managed to find a Chikorita outbreak on the coastal and polar biome border and after dealing with the abysmal spawn numbers, I found the shiny after just two sandwiches. With catching power, I was able to secure Chick-fil-A the Chikorita on the second attempt. Not too long after, I went to a Snivy outbreak at the edge of the savanna biome. This hunt lasted… maybe 10 seconds? It was pretty much there as soon as I made my catching power sandwich. I was once again able to catch it on the second attempt. I nicknamed him Trap and finally, I wasn't trapped into using Hypnosis because that was the end of the grass starters as well as the Unova ones. Continuing the chain of outbreaks, I went to this one for Fennekin in the same biome. Once again, I was blessed with a quick hunt of just 7 minutes. 
My luck was apparently just crazy right now because I caught Kuruma the Fennekin on the first try. He even had the Dawn Mark, which is one I've never had before. Oh, and we were officially done with the Kalos starters. The next day, I found an unnecessary Torchic outbreak in the one cave where you can find them in the polar biome. Outbreak or not, you can spawn in just Torchics here using a fire encounter sandwich, but an outbreak does help with the shiny rates. I merged with my trusty Latias and just zoomed in and out of the cave until I found the shiny after just 5 minutes, and the one I found turned out to be pretty special. No way, this one is female and marked. Not sure what mark it is, but that's crazy rare. Okay, Torchic, you have to join my crew. No ifs, ands, or buts. Let's do this. Aw, it's okay. We still have two more chances. The next two resets, Torchic went full kamikaze and kept knocking himself out with flare blitz. But when I finally got it to settle down... Come on, you chicken nugget. You know you want to stay in this pretty little beast ball. Yes, let's go. Wow, I actually can't believe my luck right now. That sick shiny's caught with almost no trouble at all. Since Torchic liked to fry herself with Flare Blitz so much, I nicknamed her KFC. She even had the dust mark, which is another mark that I rarely ever see. Next up on the list was a crybaby Pokemon Sobble. Well, sort of. I actually found one of the other starters after Torchic, but I'll save that one for the finale. You'll see why soon enough. Anyway, I was searching for the elusive Totodile outbreak when I found one for Sobble instead. After doing the usual outbreak things and zooming around for a while, I noticed that there weren't too many Sobble spawning and a weird number of fire Pokemon popping up instead. Turns out, there was a pretty simple explanation. Being the dummy that I am, I had accidentally made a sparkling fire sandwich since I've been shiny hunting the fire starters for a bit. I'm too embarrassed to say how long it took me to realize this, but let's just say it was a while. Once I switched sandwiches, the sobbles were bubbling up to the surface and I found the shiny less than 10 minutes later. And on the third attempt, I managed to catch Pickles the Sobble. I was one step closer to the finish line. I guess I just had fire types on my mind because for the next hunt, I went for the fire monkey Chimchar. I found a Chimchar outbreak pretty quickly in the polar biome. On paper, this is a very noticeable shiny going from a brownish color to a crimson one. But thanks to the lighting in this game, it led to quite a few situations like this. Wait, that's a shiny right? Oh come on, the back of his head was clearly a lot redder than usual. This might be harder than I thought. Okay, this blizzard makes it almost impossible to see. Why can't we toggle the weather in this game? The combination of Shinos and Mother Nature led to a shiny drought for 4 sandwiches in a row. I was at my wits end, knowing that even if I found the shiny, I might not be able to catch it. But I couldn't worry about that right now. Wait. That one's definitely shiny. Yo, let's freaking go, we finally found one. That was way harder than expected. Listen up, Chimchar. I have been freezing my butt off for hours looking for you, so the least you could do is stay in this nice comfy beast ball. Capiche? Chimchar didn't care though, as it broke out of the first two balls. But like a good little monkey, he decided to stay in the final ball. Thank Arceus because I don't know if my sanity could have taken another Chimchar hunt. Cha Cha the Chimchar marked the end of the Sinnoh starters, but Pain wasn't even close to being done with me. Oh my gosh, finally! We finally got one. If you're confused about why I was celebrating so much over this Total Dial outbreak, it's because I've been resetting for one for almost 4 real life hours. If you've been wanting a shiny Totodile and you're lucky enough to find a Totodile outbreak naturally, you have to go for it. You've been warned. For the purposes of the challenge, getting the shiny was pretty easy. I had just barely finished knocking out 60 Totodiles when... What the heck? 
Wait, I'm not even using a sandwich right now, and I wasn't even recording because I was just testing how many spawns I could get here. That's crazy. And on the third attempt, Totoro the Totodile was mine. Nice and easy, right? Wrong. Yes, I could move on, but like I was saying before, who knows when I was going to find another Totodile outbreak for my shiny living decks. So I made the bad decision to go for two more and well, things got crazy real fast. I found a shiny Bruxious in the same lake while in sinker mode, but it refused to leave this one corner. And that's when... Yo, no way, that's another shiny Totodile. Yeah, sorry Bruxious, but I gotta go. You enjoy your life over here. The next sandwich, I found another shiny Bruxish while in synchro mode. I wasn't that far this time, so I was waiting again for the Bruxish to swim to my body when a shiny Totodile appeared again. What are the odds of this happening twice in a row? Oh, it gets crazier. I unfortunately knocked out the Totodile while trying to scare it back to my body, but then another shiny Bruxish appeared right in front of me. In all my years of shiny hunting, I've never encountered such a ridiculous series of events. I had to abandon one of them because I was only able to lead one to my body, which I added to the collection. And as a cherry on top, I later found another shiny Bruxish during the same sandwich. Yeah, you know how it is, just a casual five shiny sandwich, no biggie. After all that, I still needed one more total dial. Two sandwiches later, I managed to find one. I caught it and named it Redemption in honor of the previously lost Totodile. Now we could finally move forward. Like Torchic, our friend Cyndaquil also only spawns in a specific cave in the polar biome. The sad difference is that you get little to no spawns of them in here due to all the Pokemon outside the cave. All hope is not lost because, for some reason, you can actually climb up on this small rock and do picnic resets. With a fire encounter sandwich, you just have to stand in this corner after the picnic and a decent number of syndicals will spawn. It is a pretty tedious hunt, but I was lucky enough to find one within 20 minutes of the first sandwich. Let's go! Another fast one! Not that many Cyndaquil spawn here, so I was scared this was going to take forever, but you showed up, buddy. This would be an unfortunate time for my lucky streak to end, but I know we can do this. It was unfortunate indeed, because Cyndaquil decided to burst out of all three beast balls. But surely it wouldn't take too long to find another one, right? Then, as if all my bad luck compiled into this one hunt, I entered a pretty heavy shiny drought. I kid you not, for the next 9 sandwiches, I found absolutely nothing. This was by far the longest I've gone without finding a single shiny in all my time playing Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. My sanity was dwindling, but on the 10th sandwich, I finally found some hope. Jeez, it took you long enough? Almost 5 hours without a shiny. I thought my game was cursed for a bit there. If this doesn't catch, oh man, I don't know if I'm strong enough to keep going. The first and second attempts both failed and I felt despair in my heart. But sometimes, all it takes is a single beast ball and just a little faith. Yes, let's go! Cyndaquil, you almost gave me a heart attack there, but we did it. I never want to see this cave ever again. Let's get out of here. I finally escaped the cursed cave and for the penultimate hunt, I decided to look for the first Pokemon I've ever owned, Mudkip. The one that started my very first Pokemon journey back in Emerald. Thankfully, this one was much easier since it was just a simple isolation hunt in this cave in the coastal biome. And after a little bit of time, Let's go! After Syndical, I definitely needed this fast hunt. And oh, look at that! It's a nice shiny too. Alright Mudkip, as my first ever Pokemon, this is our destiny. We're meant to be together. Let's do this. Apparently, Mudkip wasn't moved by my little motivational speech because all three attempts fell short. 
But a couple sandwiches later... Whew, okay, we got another one. Oh, no way. It's a female one, too. We can do this. Let's just ignore what I said to the previous mud kick. You're my destiny. Come home, buddy. The first two attempts failed again. I once again had just one more chance. I had to make it count. Lucky third ball, let's finish this. Let's go! Munch the Mudkip was mine and before I knew it, we only had one more starter left in the challenge. As I mentioned before, I found my score bunny earlier, but I knew I couldn't show this hunt until the end. You see, the score bunny I managed to catch is very, very special. But before we get to that, let's see how the journey went. I traveled to the score bunny outbreak I found in the polar biome. Finding shinies is a piece of cake apparently because this little guy showed up in just two picnic resets after I made a sparkling and catching power sandwich. Catching it in a bees ball, however? Aw oh, man. Nope. Oof, not this time. Goodbye, score bunny. I'll see you around sometime. Ooh, another one. Alright, buddy, you're gonna join us, right? No, that was the last attempt. Ugh, goodbye, bunny number two. You had a good life. Hey there, how are you, score bunny? Hopefully, third time's a charm. Listen, I already lost two of your brothers and I don't want to do the same to you, so what do you say you come aboard? Yeah, so these speeches never work. All three attempts failed and Squirrel Bunny was quickly met with a brick break to the face. At this point, my desperation was at an all-time high. Each shiny score bunny only came with multiple sandwiches in between. And even when I did find one, the catching power wasn't working and I wasn't able to catch any of them. But you're not defined by how many times you fall, but by your ability to get back up and try again. So after eating yet another sandwich... Yeah, it's been two hours since I last saw a shiny. Oh, finally. Yo, no freaking way. Another female mark shiny. Alright, score bunny. You and I are about to create some magic. Okay, beast ball. Don't fail me this time. <sighs> disappointment. Just disappointment. I'm not going to reset so I can get the catching power boost, so hopefully... No way. Please, score bunny, don't do this to me again. This didn't actually happen at the end of the challenge, so I decided to reset to get the two beast balls back. I was already mentally preparing myself for losing a female mark shiny and having to find another one, but I knew there was still some hope. The final attempt. Alright, Glade, you and me, buddy. We've made it this far. 16% chance, but we've overcome worse odds. Let's catch her. With my trusty Glade by my side and a little bit of luck, we caught her in the final ball. You might be wondering what exactly makes the score bunny so special. Well, besides being a female shiny, which is pretty low odds already, she also had the rare mark. Quite literally the rarest mark you can get. I'm not one to care about rarity that much, but the chance of finding a female shiny rare mark score bunny was 1 in 1,366,493. 1 this was by far the most special shiny I've ever found. With Scar the score bunny as my partner, we had successfully completed the beast ball challenge. Each and every starter Pokemon has a special place in someone's heart, including mine. This was one journey I wouldn't forget for a long, long time. And with all these amazing Pokemon by my side, our adventures have only just begun.